fitness industry is a weird space. You've got people flexing 24 seven. You've got people selling programs, telling you how to look like them. It's full of people with what looks like massive egos. But behind all of this is something that a lot of people aren't really talking about. And that's, as you can see from the title, body dysmorphia. The scary thing is it can happen to literally anyone, male, female, non-binary, transgender, whoever you are, no matter where you are on your fitness journey. And no one really cares because it's not something like anorexia. It's not something where people can physically see it in you. Let's talk about what body dysmorphia is. Body dysmorphia in basic form is when you look in the mirror and you see something that it isn't really there. So quite often you'll see in fitness that men will have this. They'll look in the mirror and they'll see themselves as smaller than they are. They'll be training for years and years. Their muscles would have grown an insane amount, but they still see themselves as that skinny guy. Body dysmorphia is basically all in your head. And it's not like it's just happening with your average gym goer. You're seeing creators like Tristan Lee, who's literally walking around at like 4% body fat, absolutely shredded, looks incredible talking about how he's not happy with his physique, how he has body dysmorphia. And this for me, I just like, I think it's mind blowing because no one's really taking it that seriously. No one's really talking about it. And the reason I want to talk about it is because I was in a cab the other day. I was in London and I was in a cab with one of my friends and he was talking about fitness because we both go to the gym and he was talking like how he's happier with his body and stuff. And I, I don't even know where it came from. I said, I genuinely think I was happier with my body when I wasn't training. And looking back, that wasn't worded right. I, I'm not, not happy with my body now compared to the past, but I critique my body to another level now. And this is something I think is happening in fitness constantly, because as soon as you start training, you are critiquing your body. You, you are trying to decrease your body fat percentage. Maybe you're trying to increase your muscle mass. So you are taking apart every little bit of your body. And this is why I had to talk about this, because I, really deep down are, are very, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with my body, I'm happy with my growth and, and how I'm going in my fitness journey. But if I'm feeling this, imagine how the, we the rest of the fitness industry is feeling. And you never know, me talking about this might make you realize that potentially you're suffering a bit. So how do you know? How would you know what the symptoms are? Well, I think someone that makes the gym their life in an, uh, an obsessive way because they're not happy with themselves is a clear sign of it. Potentially avoiding social situations which mean not getting your body out, so the beach or a pool party. Or avoiding social situations because it ruins your routine, like going out for meals, you're worried about calorie counting. All of these things are signs that you might have body dysmorphia or you might have something else going on there. And I feel like because as fitness lovers, we're all very dedicated to what we do. There's quite a fine line because I put my hands up. I'm very obsessive. I have habits in place. And some people would say that's too obsessive, but I don't because I can control it. I can say, you know what, I, I want to do that. But there are people that can't. And there's such a fine line between having actual disorder and having something that you can't mentally control and then just being obsessive and wanting to be the best at it. There are certain things that I think more recently haven't been helping this. And obviously a huge one is social media. A lot of my channel was talking about the fitness industry and creators and things like that. And I think because there are so many people in the world and you can see them all on social media, you are constantly comparing. In the past, hardly anyone created content. YouTube was a platform where hardly anyone was really on it. And if they were, you thought they were really cool, you'd follow them, but they weren't someone you'd really compare yourself to because they were an influencer. But now, these influencers are like your everyday person, or well, you think they are, so you compare yourself to them and there's literally millions. But not just that, these people are getting the best angle, they are editing, they are doing absolutely everything possible to make their body look great for the picture, which of course you're, one again, you're posting your top 1%, but it means that everyone else is just comparing. I definitely think this has led to the popularity of substances as well because a lot more people are open about it, which I think is great, but a lot more people are on substances and their aim isn't to compete. They just want their body to be the best it possibly can be. And I've got no issue with that. It's completely your decision. I've done videos on uh, being unnatural before, but it's the fact that they may be doing it for the wrong reason. You're literally taking substances because you hate your own body and you think this can fix it. And that is when it's dangerous. The final thing that I think has become a little bit dangerous 
and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, this is personal opinion at this point, but bulking and cutting. So this is especially popular with men because uh, I think there's a lot of pressure on men to be bigger, be more muscular, but there's also the pressure to be lean. So be huge, but also have a six pack. So this whole idea of bulking and cutting, when you're bulking, you may lose that six pack. You may get uh, a fatter face. Well, you, you will get a fatter face. And that is something that I think can really, really be triggering for a lot of people. And Brett Mossing did a great video on this. So I'll make sure to link that one below. Talking about how when he was bulking, he ended up basically hating his body. It gave him body dysmorphia. Well, I would call it that because if you look at his body, it's phenomenal. He looks absolutely amazing, but he saw himself as fat. He saw himself as someone that he didn't want to be. And I think this whole bulking, cutting, bulking, bulking, cutting is like, you end up half the year hating yourself, having body dysmorphia because you're so used to being so lean. And then when you're lean again, you're happy, but you may think that you're too small. And I, bulking and cutting works. I've, I, you see it firsthand with some amazing, amazing fitness influencers. But there's definitely a fine line between doing it to gain muscle and to fit within your program and then just going OTT and literally drinking olive oil, which I've seen creators do. In a time where everyone wants to be the best, everyone wants to be the biggest, and you can compare that with millions of others, when does this stop? Like, there's no ending to this video. I'm not like giving people suggestions. I'm literally like, when does it stop? Because you can't stop comparing yourself with others unless you are in the mental state and confident enough in yourself. But that's very difficult to, to have. So I don't know, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you agree with a lot of these points. I really enjoy doing videos like this where I'm talking more about personal opinion and like looking at everything as a whole rather than just critiquing certain influences and stuff. It's not really my thing. So if you enjoy this style of video, please let me know. I'd really appreciate it and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.